Emirates Team New Zealand have suffered damage to the bow of their AC-40 today after an early start testing on Auckland's Hauraki Gulf in some top-end conditions. The resulting impact of the water pressure collapsed the foredeck at the bow of the AC-40. Significantly, the watertight bulkhead aft of where the damage occurred maintained its structural integrity. Really tough day for us as a team and we were sailing out you know, getting some waves and really pushing things things to the upper end of the, the spectrum. But yeah, we had a, obviously a, a pretty good crash down, down the back of a wave. A decent structural failure in the, in the bow area, not extreme conditions, quite big waves but um, big stuff probably compressed the deck which is buckled and then as the boat's rounded up it's taken side force which has got compression into the starboard side. That's very speculative at the moment but that's how it looks just when you physically look at the boat and knowing you know, how far under the boat went and the stuff. So the boat's got to be able to do that sort of thing because even an automatic pilot sometimes things can go wrong. So yeah, it is a structural failure which needs to be remedied and more strength put into that area. One of the really pleasing things today was just about how we've you know, managed to get the, the boat back here in reasonable time without any further damage. You know, I think the, the whole team out on the water did an amazing job. It, it couldn't have been better actually. And as soon as we got into the smooth water, felt the boat was quite safe up onto the foils and home. And well, I think it was textbook recovery. And you'd expect that from the guys, Curly's running that and everybody responded, the comms stayed on. In that respect, couldn't be better. This is your weekly sailing highlights show, The World on Water, for November 25, 2022. Emirates team New Zealand CEO Grant Dalton said, it appears that when the boat nose dived, which was the best we have done, the high water pressure and side load collapsed the forward section of the deck, causing the resulting bow damage. Um, I mean, it's really early to say what actually happened, but I, in the start, I lost the rudder, they're in LEQ 12 mode at the moment, um, manual control, lost the rudder, stuffed it pretty deep, but it happens, and then it rounded up, and I, it looks like, just in the initial discussion with the designers, that basically the, the deck is, is creased, and then the side load on the, on the, on the well, the compression of the um, starboard side has allowed the bow to come round as well and, and crush that. So. Who knows, but it, it could be just we need to put another ring frame in the front uh, or in the bow area just to, to strengthen that whole area up. I think the, the knock-on effect is this is obviously going to need a, a new bow, but uh, there's, there's Ineos' boat which is delivered, so that's going to have to have a bit of a retro. Our boat is the next one, and it's due here next week, and uh, a Lingi's next off the, the taxi off, and that's still in the yard, so we'll be able to just retrofit that then. So it's not ideal. Uh, but, you know, it happens and we'll deal with it. So it's a, basically a new boat, we're doing new things with it and well, we're finding yeah, those yeah, I, yeah, you're right, but then this isn't a, you know, a, 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 how do I fill off the deck, you know, this is a decent structural failure, so I don't think we're doing anything with it extreme um, at all. Uh, although it was, you know, we were pushing it. It was a good crash. Yeah, it was yeah. a good crash, and you know, you know, you guys were struggling to keep up with the chase boat, so it was pretty decent waves. But, but you know, that's that's what we'll get, and a boat should do be able to handle that stuff. It's just how that's how it works, you know. Uh, and cancel the regatta at Rhino Beach Boating Club, you know. So, so as I say, the guys have got to analyse it properly. It's way too speculative, but it's obviously had a, a compression failure in the deck and a side load, which is you know, turned the bow. It may be as simple as it needs another ring frame, it might need some longitudinals. Um, you know, but until we look at it properly, we can't be sure. Well, we, we, when, you, when it all happened, we got on site. Um, first thing I was really worried about was if you righted the boat, and then we had rig load on, on yeah. our damaged um, chain boat in the bow, the rig was going to come down, and, yeah. and then the boat was going to sink. So I was very impressed with your um, damage control. No, nobody rushed. So it took your time and, we, and, and basically check are we taking on water. Obviously we had a bit of water in the boat, but not as much as I was expecting well, to see. Well, there's a, there's a bulkhead, a, a crash bulkhead, and, and everything was contained in front of that. So there was no water in the boat at all at any stage. Um, the, yeah, the, losing the forestay and then losing the rig was definitely something we had to consider. And therefore we just ran the man line down, put a hole through the deck and tied it below. So. 
Um, and the boat's happy sitting on its side like that. So yeah, there was. It, well, I was just saying to Curly on the way, and that was a very controlled um, environment. The guys that just you know, know what they're doing, and we just got on with it. So in no time was the boat in any real. Uh, at first, you're not quite sure until you know that it's contained in front of a little watertight bulkhead. But the boat was never in any danger at any time. No, fantastic, Grant. Thank you very much. The fleet in the Route du Rum is arriving 24-7 in Guadeloupe after a harrowing crossing of the Atlantic from France. The first woman and international home is Swiss sailor Justine Metros, who was seventh in the Amoka class. Well done, Justine. The arrivals into Guadeloupe came thick and fast through day and night, come rain or shine, all of them sure they'd done their best. I've never gone this far, that's for sure. I've never put so much intensity into a solo race. It was the hardest I've ever done, that's for sure. I've gone beyond what I ever expected in this route to run. In the back of my mind, I was hoping for this, so I'm very satisfied. Everyone in the team can be proud of the work we did. It was a pretty tough route to rum. It's nothing like a Vendée Globe for sure. You have to be on the gas all the time. It's both nice and tough. Swiss sailor Justine Metro and her Imoca achieved an impressive seventh place in her first route to rum. We've had a lot of squalls over the last few days, so really unstable conditions with sail changes to be made. So we've had to be on our toes the whole time. Plus, that sprint around Guadeloupe means it was very tiring. I'm really happy to have arrived. It was great racing against the others. And then it's always great to finish here in the West Indies, which always warms the heart. She's the first woman in this 2022 edition to arrive in Guadeloupe. Isabel Josh, who crossed the finish line a few hours later, took a very good ninth place. I managed every time to find resources and energy, and then the ability that made me hold this position to the end. So I'm really proud and happy. Johan Richom is still leading the class 40s with his rivals trying to close in. It's going fast. We're surfing the waves. Day one for the Aeneos Britannia team and Giles Scott explains tactics. There's no mast in the T6, and it was foiling as it was towed around the Bay of Palma. Giles Scott, head of sailing here at Ineos. Big day for the team. The, uh, the leq 12 has been on the water and even flew a little bit. H how do you feel right now? Yeah, good. It's, um, it's good to get the boat out of the shed, get it out onto the water, do a bit of, bit of foiling. Um, so, yeah, it's a real positive day for the team. Um, you know, it's been a lot of hard work going into into getting uh, T6, T6 up and running and, and for sure today is a, is a good step in the direction we want to we want to push it along. So what were your objectives today for this first day? It's really a, sh a shakedown tow testing day for us, just systems check, checks of a lot of different areas, chase boat comms, data links um, and then obviously all the systems on the, or some of the systems on the yacht as well. You did manage to get flying on the tow, I think uh, four times, I think we counted. Yeah. Uh, how did she feel? Uh, as expected, really. Um, yeah, no, certainly no complaints from any of the sailors on board once we were, once we were up and in control of the yacht. Um, so yeah, the, the, no, no real surprises there from our, from our side. Seemed to be a long period after the last kind of brief foiling session. People going down below. Was there a, was there a technical problem on the boat? There's an awful lot of debugging going on. Um, so yeah, we had uh, some of the hydro guys, the electronic guys, and a lot of the guys that are that are all dialed into the yacht ashore and, and also back at Brackley, looking looking into various parts of the yacht that. To be honest, you're asking the wrong guy if you want to know exactly what they were looking into. OK, um, now plans, when we spoke to Ben last, he said you guys would do more tow testing than other teams, perhaps. Yeah. How, how long are we going to be tow testing for now? We don't know exactly how long we're going to be tow testing for, but yeah, for sure, tow testing is, is a focal part of the early, early section of uh, the testing with T6. Um, so, you know, with, with that, it's, it, it's really a, 
really what the designers want out of the boat is some nice, steady data. And the towing that we'll be doing with this yacht will hopefully be able to provide that for them. Um, so yeah, it's the first big ticket ticket item that we're after. When might we see you go sailing on on T6? Uh, well, hopefully in the, in the in the coming weeks. I won't put a date on it. That's for sure. <laughs> the season wrap video for the GC32 foiling okay, fleet go, go, go. started in Italy okay. and finished in Portugal. Okay, Some of the crews are getting foiling experience for the next America's Cup. Since its inaugural year in 2014, the GC32 Racing Tour has provided plenty of emotions alongside some unique sailing battles. Top-level sailors showcase the very best high-flying action on board these one-design foiling catamarans. The 2022 season started with the GC32 flying catamarans going full speed on the waters of Italy's Lake Garda. New teams lined up alongside experienced and past crews returning to the tour ready for a season full of foiling action. It's great to be back, wonderful venue, we love to be here. We had our first world championship here in Riva and we're uh, very much looking forward for a great week of sailing. With the GC32 Racing Tour, we try and go to the best foiling venues, the best sailing venues for our GC32 flying catamarans. Switzerland's Alinghi Red Bull Racing SUI8 did enough to secure victory. It was the best possible start to the defense of their 2021 title. We're really happy to win the first event here in uh, Riva del Garda. The team show are really strong uh, racing skills uh, during the four days. Even uh, when we were behind, we did some really nice comeback. The GC32 Racing Tour selects ideal locations for its foiling catamarans, so returning to Lagos, Portugal for the second stop was an obvious decision. The GC32 Racing Tour has been at the top of the sport since its inception with the world's best teams, generating one of the most competitive foiling fleets in the world. I like sailing on the GC32 because it's, uh, it's more of a classic foiling uh, catamaran, you know, you've got, uh, you've got soft sails and your, your ropes and pulleys, as I say, you know, it's uh, good old fashioned hard work and, uh, and the sailors love that as well. After a week of action at some breathtaking speeds, it was a Lingi Red Bull Racing SUI 15 skippered by Arno Sarafagas that won the 2022 Lagos Cup, maintaining his 100% win rate in Lagos. The third and final stop of the 2022 season was the most anticipated one, as it would also act as the GC32 World Championships. Once again, the highly skilled crews of these catamarans travelled to Lagos ready to offer some spectacle and drama. Title contenders would have to fly their fastest on the Atlantic Ocean in front of southern Portugal's sandy beaches to secure their spot in the history books. They challenged Team France with a dominant force during the first half of the GC32 World Championship, but for the second half, it was Christian Zarera's Black Star sailing team that overtook the French. With outstanding consistency, the Swiss podiumed in every one of the last 10 races, and they were crowned the Flying Catamarans class's fourth ever world champions. Absolutely happy to win the 22 World Championship of the GC32 class. It was great to fight against K Challenge. It was not an easy day. The World Championship in Lagos also marked the conclusion of another exciting GC32 season. Alinghi Red Bull Racing SUI 8 secured the overall tour's title. The Swiss showed consistency at all three stops and finished ahead of Black Star Sailing Team 
and Team Rock were racing in the final standings. In the owner drivers category, Eric Maris's Zulu showed consistency and finished first after these three stops. It's, it's what makes this fleet so so special and why we keep coming back. It's the um, it's the level, the quality of the sailors um, and the competition. The mixture of owner drivers and professionals uh, is exactly what this fleet is all about. And if we can compete with these guys at about the same level, it's all bonus for me. It was another high-flying season for the GC32 Racing Tour and its foiling catamarans. The teams of the 37th America's Cup are testing. Alinghi Red Bull are in the AC venue Barcelona, American Magic are in Pesacola, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli are in Cagliari, Ineos Britannia are in Parma, and Emirates Team New Zealand in Auckland. British Olympic Ilka coach John Emmett was at the Ilka 6 and 7 European Championships in France last week. Here is his report. Hi, I'm John Emmett and I'm at the Ilka 6 European Championships. It's just finished and we've had a pretty speedy pack up in the rain. But more important, the person to my right is not only the European champion, but back to back European champion. So if you can introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Agata Barwinska and I'm from Poland. And you had a superb year last year? Uh, yeah, I had a really good year. Yeah, I finished second at the awards and uh, I won the Europeans. Uh, so it was a pretty good year. <laughs> and were you expecting this or you think uh, maybe uh, that the competition level's gone up or how's it, how's it looking coming into the second half of the Olympic cycle? Uh, I would say, uh, of course, I was coming here to defend my title, but I would say it was a really hard event and uh, each regatta are very difficult and uh, you can expect anyone to win, basically. Absolutely, and I think it's just getting harder and harder from the coaches' perspective. They sometimes ask us who's performing well and the, the list of names gets longer and longer. 
only six months to the next Europeans. What happens between now and then? Uh, now, of course, a little bit of a break. Uh, Well-deserved break because it was a very long season. Uh, so what, what's a break for a European champion? Uh, well, end of December, uh, beginning of January, we're planning to go to Villa Mora. So uh, back to training uh, in the beginning of Jan. And how will you enjoy your time off then? Uh, home, definitely home with a bit of snow because I saw it's already started snowing there. So I'm uh, going to uh, enjoy a bit of uh, colder weather. <laughs> You're going to enjoy the cold weather. It's funny, not many sailors said that to me this week, but... Uh... Uh, yeah, with water cold, uh, that's not great, but with the snow, I, I love snow. So it's uh, good to be, it's going to be good to be home. Brilliant. Really well deserved break. Once again, many congratulations and maybe see you in Villamora. Thank you very much and see you there. <laughs>
<laughs> no more spinnakers. Spinnakers. Uh, they're two tiny ones now sitting in the floor hatch. Uh, yeah, they, it blew up, uh, tore to shreds, so I don't have any spinnakers anymore. Um, the rest of your sail still good? Yeah, yeah, uh, jib's still good. I have a little bit of tear on the sail cloth on the uh, umbrella, but I repaired one little rip that was in it. The mainsail is perfect. There's not a thing wrong with it except for a few slides. Um, but I don't have any extra slides that I want to use so uh, yet. Uh, they're kind of last second. Um, otherwise, I have a little baby. Uh, I call it a hanky, not a yankee. And it's, uh, uh, it's unusual. <laughs> it's a shame because we, you know, spent a lot of time and money trying to get it to the boat in time, and uh, it's just a little bit too small. So it's a good backup sail. <laughs>